Roswell Flight Test Crew here at Exponential 2019 in Chicago, the windy city, the city of broad shoulders. And I'm here talking to Justin Selfridge. How are you doing, Justin? I'm doing just fine. How are you doing today? I'm doing real good. Now, you've got a project here called Turn, <laughs> yes. and I it is mind-blowing. <laughs> Not before, the first time I've heard that. <laughs> <laughs> but before we, before we can even tell people what it is, they need to understand what something called a pseudo-satellite is. So what is a pseudo-satellite? In a nutshell, I am developing an aircraft that never has to land. So the acronym is High Altitude Pseudo Satellite. It's essentially an aircraft that's so aerodynamically efficient and low power that you can collect enough solar energy during the day where you can keep flying throughout the night and then repeat that cycle indefinitely. So you're no longer constrained to how much fuel you can carry. You just come down for routine maintenance and upgrade your uh, package. Well, so, but, but people are already trying to do this with like a fixed wing, right? That is correct. They've been working on this problem for, God, over 10 years. A lot of tier one aerospace companies. The problem you run into is all of those designs are following very standard aircraft configurations where you run into a problem where the aerospace guys want really long, slender wings. You see that in gliders a lot. The structural guys start pulling their hair out because now they say, wait, we have a spaghetti wing, we can't control this. So there's been a, a, a lot of pushing the envelopes. We've already optimized that design as far as it can possibly go. You can't do the job with existing solar cells and battery technology. We're just not there. Our man Justin here sees <laughs> this problem and he goes, I've got an idea. Justin, <laughs> tell us about your idea. Okay, so the, the idea is we have this aerodynamic structural problem, and I borrowed a precept from a different aircraft, a helicopter. So if you've ever seen one at rest on the tarmac, they have very long, skinny rotors that actually droop under their own weight, extremely flimsy, until it starts spinning. Now you have centrifugal force stiffening, uh, creating a very rigid platform, lifting a substantially heavy vehicle. Fortunately, because those rotors are spinning so fast, that's why helicopters have traditionally terrible aerodynamics. So that's not the part that I'm concerned about. I was just interested in the physics of it. Could we use centrifugal stiffening to solve this aerodynamic and structural problem? So the genesis for the design was, uh, rather than having one single high aspect ratio wing, what if you had four that were all tethered together around a central hub? And the way the system operates is it's in a perpetual state of rotation, like a helicopter, which pulls tension through the tether and provides tension in the wing. So this does a lot of things for the design problem. Composites hate compression. So if you can put the wing in tension, you can cut the structural load in half. Once you reduce that amount of material, then you can take a hail aircraft taking 40% battery, you can consider an 80% battery on board this type of system. And then finally, the, the biggest bang for the buck is the type of airfoil that you can use. Hail aircraft typically like 14, 15, 16% thickness because they have a bending problem that they have to solve. If you can relax that constraint through centrifugal stiffening, you can look at very thin thickness, high camber, low laminar airfoil, that has L over D ratios three times higher than standard practice. So when you add all of these factors up, you end up with a, a novel concept that's able to do an order of magnitude less power than a comparable weight fixed wing. All right, so you got this truly giant helicopter in the sky. How big is this bad boy? <laughs> It sounds big. It's really not as big as some other hail aircraft. The, the wing panel itself is about 30 meters. I've looked at numbers with an aspect ratio of 50, which at first sounds big, but it's actually uh, comparable to some gliders that we see in practice without the benefit of centrifugal stiffening. And if you compare that number to hail aircraft, like the, the NASA Aerovironment Helios, that had a 300 foot, you know, 100 meter wingspan. So this is really a baby compared to what other HAPS aircraft look like. <laughs> wingtip to wingtip, how big is this thing? Oh, let's see, 30, the tether's 120, that's 150, 300 meter diameter. So close to a thousand feet. Uh, yes. Yeah, about a, uh, what's that, a fifth of a mile? <laughs> we gotta start changing our scale. <laughs> yeah, no, true enough. Now, what kind of payload can this thing carry? How high does it fly? Sort of give us the rundown. Okay, so pseudo satellite, they like to live in the stratosphere, which is 65,000 feet. It's kind of an ideal operating condition. You get much more benign winds, and the air is thin enough to give you a big wing to let you collect a lot of solar energy. To put it in comparison for the payload, a lot of hail have aircraft right now are limited to about a five or ten pound payload. My PhD dissertation looked at payloads ranging anywhere from 50 pounds to 250 pounds. Just <laughs> extraordinary. And it can fly forever. 
You know, we, we can't defy the laws of physics, so entropy is still working against us. But the thing that's really working in our favor is a lot of these other exotic technologies are using something like lithium sulfur batteries. Those last about 20 charge discharge cycles. So the world record right now is 21 days. Probably because the batteries failed on day 20 and they just coasted for another half a day. So if you can use much more reliable, higher TRL components like lithium ion, now we're talking about 500 charge discharge cycles. So that's close to a year and a half. So can this thing move or is it like just stuck in one place? No, it's a claim to fame is station keeping, but certainly you have to be able to still get from point A to point B. So while it's not designed for speed, it can still travel about 60 or 70 miles an hour. So if you want to get from New York to Los Angeles, give it two days. I mean, all things considering that it's a thousand foot helicopter in this stratosphere, <laughs> I'll take the two day travel. Yeah. Well, Justin, I, I, I'm, I'm literally gobsmacked. I mean, I just, I mean, thanks so much for sharing Certainly it with us. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. And from Exponential 2019, home of the thousand foot flying helicopter, this is the Roswell Flight Test Cruise signing off. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Wow.